are the Tribulation Saints. I don't know about you, but I've messed up a lot since I've started following Jesus. And sometimes I had wondered and can go through depression and wonder still if God still loves me and if he'll forgive me. And I think we all go through that, especially those of us who have really struggled, really messed up. Does God still love us? Is it possible for us to be forgiven? I want to answer that today. If you want to see all my videos, just go to my website, wearethelastgeneration.com, scroll down, hit that new video button, and it will take you to all my new videos. And remember, if you're helped or blessed by this ministry, please don't forget to donate. We are listener and viewer supported by the grace of God. Thank you. We really do got to live by faith, hope, and trust. Because when we read the scriptures, we see contradictory scriptures sometimes, it seems. For instance, right here, Jesus says, it's possible through God. Anything's possible through God, right? And then in Hebrews, we see it says, it's impossible once you have fallen away from God to be renewed again to repentance. It's impossible. But then we go to Jesus and he says that it is possible, that all things are possible two times. Matthew 19, 26, and right here again, he says in Mark 9, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. I think the struggle is our faith. Can we believe that God loves us and he wants to forgive us and that he will forgive us? See, look what he says right here in verse 24. Mark 9, 24. And straight away the father of the child cried out and said, I believe. But then he says, right after that, and this is what we all deal with. He says, also though, help thou mine unbelief. Help me with my unbelief where I still have issues, where I still doubt, where I still worry, where I'm still anxious. I find myself being in a position where people think that I'm some kind of super spiritual leader. <laughs> and many people have no idea how I still struggle in areas. And I'm serious about certain things. I have to overcome anxiety. Notice how I'm saying it. I have to overcome anxiety. I'm overcoming anxiety about things in my life, bills, pressures, worries of the world. I'm overcoming that stuff. And I have to say this all the time, help me with my unbelief. Now this unbelief can be in areas where you're stubborn, you're still stubborn, you're not quite obeying, you're being rebellious, you keep slipping, you find a bad habit. Help me in those areas of unbelief because unbelief is directly tied to obeying and being faithful to God. Help me where I'm not faithful to you. Help me. And this is what he's praying. This is what he's asking God, even though he believes some things, he's struggling with other things, right? Because when we read scriptures like this over here now, in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 20, for if they escape the pollution of the world through the knowledge of the Lord, and they again become entangled and overcome, the later is worse than the beginning. It was better for him to have never known the way of righteousness than to have known it and turned from the holy commandment. These scriptures are terrifying, terrifying, just like Hebrews chapter 6. For it is impossible once you've tasted the goodness of God and be made partakers of the Holy Ghost, right? After you've tasted the powers of the world to come, if you fall away, it is impossible to renew them again unto repentance. And that is a very terrifying and scary verse. Now, I am not trying to make light of these verses. These are true. These are realities. And many people, many people go through this, experience this, and are judged by this. But there's plenty of people also who have to be tested by these things, 
to see what's going to happen, to see what you're going to do, to see if you can still believe through, to see if you have the grace manifesting in you to press forward like the Canaanite woman who Jesus called a dog and she kept coming forward and she was so faithful to, to Jesus that he gave her what she wanted. I think he did that to test her. He said, even I can't take what's for, for the children and give it to the dogs. He was trying to brush the woman off. And how he spoke was really disrespectful. So it would seem. Or was it a test? The woman came forward anyway. Even the dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table. Are you telling me you can't help me at all? She didn't take no for an answer. She didn't take no for an answer. I think God really wants to see that kind of faithfulness in us. If we are on the edge of messing up so bad that we can't be forgiven, then I would suggest to all of us that if there is any hope for us, that we repent. The, the thing we need to show God is that we believe so much. Look at my life. Look at, look at my effort of believing you. And I'm not talking about dead works of men. I'm talking about you believe so much. Your faith is so strong that God can see it. Just like he saw the Canaanite woman coming, even after he tested her heavily with his words, she came forward anyway. So this man right here knows he believes in some things, but he also recognizes that he has issues. And instead of just accepting, oh, I'm a sinner. Oh, I'm going to fail. We're all going to make mistakes. Instead of accepting that, instead of embracing that, this is a great lesson for us today. Help me with these things. I don't accept it. Help me with this area. Help me with this problem and believe and believe that God can change you because all things are possible through him. We do not accept sin. We do not embrace it. We do not invite it in. We do not hang out with it. Help me where I need help. Help me believe. Help me trust you. Help me have faith. Help me change and then turn from your wicked ways. This will show that you love God. This will show that you're pressing forward to attain the eternal reward. And you're not just going to roll over and let sin dominate you. So yes, we mess up, but we have to believe that God still loves us and that there's chance and that there's hope. Right now is the time for hope. There is coming a time when there will be no more hope. After you die, there is no more hope. Today is the day of hope. And if you can hope today, then you can turn from your sins today and turning from your sins and showing God and proving to God that you are serious is what he wants from us. So let us stop talking. Let us stop being religious. Let us prove our faith and show God how much we believe and show God how much we trust and love him. Peace.